I'm here with Blame F as part of the media day, the calm before the storm before we head to the cathedral. So I want to ask you, you know, it's a relatively new team. I don't know how much practice you guys have had. So knowing that you've made it to playoffs this early in the team's evolution, how do you feel about the performance overall? Well, I'm really proud of our performance overall. I think we had a good showing both at Blast and also going into uh, Cologne. Honestly, I just wanted to be in Cologne. So just going through the play-in, that was like the first step. And then, yeah, of course, we got a very hard group, I think, and we made it through that ahead of teams like FaZe and Na'Vi. So, yeah, a brand new team, brand new IGL and uh, new players and everything. So I'm very proud of where we are right now. Along with sort of the team's general performance, I wanted to ask you about your own individual performance. Uh, you gave an interview to HLTV where you thought, where you said you think your individual level is going to suffer now that you've taken over as IGL proper over Glaive. Um, how do you feel, you know, about your individual performance? Has it suffered, or are you happy with, you know, the, holding up to a level that meets your expectations? It definitely has suffered a bit. I can feel that it's hard to focus on the individual when you constantly have to like look at your teammates and tell them what to do and tell them like what needs to throw and execute and everything. So it definitely has suffered, but I also know I'm, I'm playing a lot of Counter-Strike, so I'm not expecting myself to be like one of the worst players all of a sudden just because I'm playing an IGL. But yeah, I think it has suffered a little bit, but I'm doing my best to still perform a little bit on the server. Mm -hmm. And so pre previously, you know, before taking up the role of IGL of Astralis, you were the IGL of Complexity. And so in between those two sort of periods, you obviously worked under Glaive. Did the influence of Glaive on your uh, professional career change how you called as a leader, how you called in game or how you act as a leader of a team? Maybe a little bit in some subparts, of course, like when you play under an, another IGL for, what is it, like one and a half years or something, of course you, you learn some things, maybe even without knowing it. Um, but yeah, I don't think, uh, I think the way I'm calling is very, maybe different from other people, as you can see with a lot of memes and everything. Mm -hmm. So uh, so yeah, but I'm, I'm calling the way I'm comfortable and the way I'm, I like to call and I try to like look at the good teams, of course, and get some inspiration from, from all of them. So. Yeah, maybe a little bit. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to ask you about that as well, in the sense that, you know, obviously, Beta F, um, that, that meme seems very played out now. How do you feel about still being called, you know, Beta F, even though you go for so many entry attempts and it doesn't, like, how, it's been a meme for such a long time, it's almost old hat now. How do you feel now that it's evolved and sort of become old? For me, I don't really care, honestly. I only care what my teammates say. Um, but yeah, I, I, I know for sure that when I was in Complexity, I, di I didn't go for many entry attempts. I was playing with Oboe, Rush, Config, Poison, just all over aggressive players. And I think that also made me like a more passive player because uh, it kind of made sense in that team. Someone had to be like the guy throwing the nades and everything. So yeah, just kind of like, I think that team maybe defined my play style a little bit. I think then when I came to Astralis and I wasn't IGLing anymore, I think I was actually going for a lot of entry, entries and I was doing a lot of like that. I didn't get much credit for it maybe, but uh, I think I definitely was doing that and I got a lot of credit for it within the team at least. Um, but yeah, now we have a new lineup and I changed my roles again because now I'm IGLing. So now, again, I don't think I'm doing many entries now, like maybe a little bit, but uh, not that many because we have more new guys that, are, that wanted those positions where you like play like forward on the map, uh, especially in map control. So in, yeah, just in a lot of defaults, I'm definitely the guy throwing a lot of nades for them and setting them up for uh, whatever place they want. So yeah, I think it just changed a lot depending on the team, but you know, I don't really care what other people say. The most important thing is what my team thinks. Mm -hmm. In line with that, you know, it seems like, you know, you as IGL of Astralis, Kaden as IGL of Heroic, it seems like there's a lot of criticism or there's almost like a lot of like shit talking from the community and abroad in terms of, uh, you know, Danish IGLs. Do you think there's something about, you know, your leadership of Astralis or Kaden's leadership of Heroic or some systemic explanation of why it seems like Danish IGLs are almost a lightning rod for criticism? Mm, I haven't felt that criticism that bad, honestly. I think Kadian is one of the best IGLs in the world. I think Snappy is one of the best IGLs in the world. I think Karrigan is one of the best IGLs in the world. Like I think Denmark has a lot of good IGLs, so I think if people criticize them a lot, I think that's on them, honestly, because there's a reason why they're on the top and has been for so long. Mm -hmm. And, you know, looking towards this new roster as well, uh, you know, recent pickups of uh, Borup and Stayer, I wanted to ask you about Borup first. Uh, you previously played with him on Heroic. Did that influence Astralis' decision to sign him? Like, how much say did you have over the Borup signing? Yeah, I had a lot of say on this new lineup. I was uh, a big part of building it because obviously it had to fit to my calling and everything. And I've been, been thinking that Borup has been a good player for many years. I think uh, he's like a like a piece that every team kind of needs because he's like, 
he can entry, he can support, he can lurk, he can you know he can do a lot of different uh, things, and I think that's important to have a guy in a team that can like kind of be pretty adaptive, especially if you have a lot of other players that are not as adaptive maybe. So yeah, I think I think uh, I was definitely a, a guy who said that he's a good good player to have in a team. Mm-hmm. And you know, with Buzz and Stayer, um, it seems like you know previously, obviously Astralis would only really sign. You know, you have the original you know Danish five, you know the legendary Danish five, and then you have them signing people like you know Asetag, people like Blame F, people like you know already well established names in the Danish scene. Is it a conscious decision by the leadership of Astralis to go towards these younger, more develop, less developed players? I think when we build this roster, we thought a lot about CS2 as well. And for us, the most important thing is not being one of the best teams in the world right now, but building a team that can compete in CS2. And I think some of the factors that are important in CS2 is that you're a young guy that are able to grind and have longevity in the game and being able to, you know, sit and play at night and, you know, play after practice hours and, you know, just have a, a lot of motivation in that sense. And I think that comes from younger players. So that was a big focus when, when we made this roster. Mm-hmm. And, you know, looking towards uh, Friday, um, I think one of the big storylines of I Am Cologne is the Danish derby that's coming up between Astralis and Heroic. Uh, for a while, Heroic's been sort of touted as sort of the de facto number one team in Denmark ever since the, uh, you know, old Astralis lineup started to, you know, change over time. Um, what, how do you feel about that match and sort of a, First, first on an emotional level, you know, facing off against the Danes in the arena. I don't care who I face. Like, uh, it could be any team. Like, uh, we're just happy that we made it to the to the arena. And if we get get another win, that would be huge. But we also know that we are underdogs. Some of our players, it's the first time on the big stage. So of course, we don't have big expectations like uh, the big favorites. And we'll go out and have fun and uh, and enjoy the moment. And then uh, we'll uh, see what happens. Mm-hmm. And how is your preparation going for them? Do you guys, you know, you mentioned the fact that, you know, you would like to beat them, but it's not, you know, something maybe expected for the team. But how do you feel your preparation's been going for that match? Well, so far, I haven't had any preparation because uh, we ended our game yesterday at like 1 or 2 a.m. And then I went back and instant to bed and then I came instant to media day. So to be honest, I haven't t- thought much about the game yet. yet. Like, I'm going to go that, do that when I get home. So no thoughts on that matchup yet, honestly. Yeah, fair enough. I guess we were. I guess we saw you leave at the same time we did. So fair enough. Yeah. Uh, looking, you know, towards um, some of the comments you made at Blast Fall, you mentioned sort of the management changes within Astralis, and I wanted to sort of ask you about those changes. The first one, I think, that's the really big community talking point is the removal of Hunden from the roster. During his time with the team, he was, you know, very much criticized because of some of his issues. But was he a net positive during his time on the team, or like how do you con- how do you feel about his time on Astralis? Well, one thing I'm going to say is that I'm not going to talk too much about past players and coaches or whatever on the team because I'm not uh, here to make any uh, the talk bad about anyone or good about anyone else. Like, uh, that's been part of the team. Like, it's just stupid. But I would say that I think that it was undeserved the criticism that Hunton got from the community when he joined the trials. I think he's a good guy. And uh, yeah, I think uh, I think he's a, he was a good uh, like part of the team as well, I know it's called like a good uh, guy who did everything he could to make the team better, for sure. Mm-hmm. And with him moving, on, you know, now he's moving on to uh, Sashi. For those who don't know, is a very um, is sort of a developmental Danish roster. Uh, in, in that sense, you know, do you think that's kind of a good home for him, somewhere where he can be more developmentally focused? I, you know, I, I hate to sort of put you on the spot as a Danish person talking about Hunden, but I think a lot of people are curious about you know what his future will be, sort of in the in the scene. And from your time with him, I just wanted to ask you if you think that's something he could excel at. Mm, yeah, I mean, obviously that's what he's known for, is like bringing up talents, but in my opinion, he could have gone to another big team uh, because I think he's a smart guy. So, uh, but yeah, I don't I, I don't know obviously why he chose what and what offers he had. I have no clue about that, but I think that he's a, he's a smart person about Counter-Strike and uh, he's a good guy. Mm-hmm. And final question for you, looking sort of at the general trends in the CS landscape right now, we see most teams are trending towards being international stacks. You know, Liquid recently moved to a European international stack. We've had G2 phase for years that have been international. Uh, was that ever a consideration for Astralis and it's, you know, in the rebuild since you've been there to move away from being a full five-man Danish lineup? Or do you think that will ever become a possibility for the organization? Yeah, I think it's a possibility for sure, but it wasn't really talked about because... I know why people do it. It's easy to do uh, roster changes when you have more players to choose from, obviously, and there's more uh, firepower you can choose from. But I think the way we chose to build this lineup is not based around like solely 
like firepower, firepower only. It's more built around like having good connection with each other, making sure that people are good with each other socially. We knew each other from before, like uh, not not like that, but we like played with someone in each other before, so we had like good uh, experiences with each other. And I think that was more important for us than building like a team with like more firepower, but maybe they were not as connected as a team. Mm-hmm. Oh, and I guess one more thing. You know, you're known as one of the most disciplined players, I think, especially from a physicality level. Um, what's your gym? Your, what's your gym routine been like in Cologne? I just go to the gym every day and train one one or two muscle group because usually I do one muscle group at a time at home, but now I have to do maybe two sometimes because there's not as many machines or heavy weights. So I'll do like one or two muscle groups together a day and then I'll do some cardio after. I'll, I'll run a little bit and then I'll go a little bit on the bicycle and then maybe like 15 minutes of cardio total after my workout and I'll just do that every day, honestly. All right. Thank you so much for your time. We'll see you in action tomorrow.